Good morning and welcome to WWDC. Our new release is iOS 14. This year, we spent time rethinking some of the most iconic elements of the experience on iPhone. Let's dig in, starting with the home screen. Wouldn't it be great if there were a way to organize all of those apps without doing a thing? Well, this year we're doing just that with something called the App Library. It's a new space at the end of your home screen pages that automatically organizes all your apps in one simple and easy to navigate view. Here's my home screen. You can see that all of my apps are automatically organized here. In fact, now with the app library, I actually don't need all those pages for all my apps. So we created an easy way to hide app pages. I just go into jiggle mode, tap the dots at the bottom and check this out. I can simply tap to hide the pages I no longer need, just like that. And now with those pages hidden, app library is always just a swipe or two away. Each of these categories, the apps I use most are right here at the top level. So I can launch one of these directly with just a tap. Next, let's turn to widgets. So let's swipe over to Today View and take a look at our new widgets. And you can see they now come in a variety of sizes. So you can pick just the right level of information for each one. So check this out. I'm just gonna tap and hold on the weather widget and I can drag it out of Today View and onto my home screen. And watch, as I move it around, the apps just dance out of the way to make space for my new widget. But you know, right now what I wanna do is grab this widget up top. It's a really special one. It's called the Smart Stack. I'm just gonna tap it and drop it here. With the Smart Stack, I can easily swipe through widgets to pick just the one I want for the moment. But what's really cool is that the Smart Stack can actually do this for me automatically. So in the morning, I can get my news briefing. Throughout the day, find out when I have a meeting coming up. And in the evening, I might get a summary of my activity for the day. So that's widgets on the home screen. We're excited to see how everyone will customize them in their own way. Next, we're also bringing picture and picture to iPhone. So here on my home screen, the smart stack is showing me the TV widget. So I can just tap to start playing a show. Now check this out. When I swipe to go home, the video automatically goes into picture in picture right over the home screen. And when I launch another app, like Notes, I can keep watching. Now I can drag the picture to another part of the screen. If I wanna make it bigger, I can even pinch to zoom. And as I move between applications, it stays with me. And what's cool is I can also swipe it to the side and the audio keeps playing when it's off screen. Now here on the home screen, I can bring it back out if I want. And I have controls to get back to full screen playback, or I can just tap the X to close it. Next up, messages. To tell you more, here's Stacy Lysick. Thanks, Craig. First, let's get started with conversations. From the beginning, messages was designed to make it really easy to get to your newest messages. But with so many active conversations, sometimes it can be tough to get to the ones that are most important to you. So we are introducing a new way to let you stay connected to your most important conversations by letting you pin them at the top of your list so you can always get to them. And you can see messages as they come in with a beautiful animation on the pin. Last, let's chat about groups. First, we're adding inline replies that let you reply directly to a specific message. You can view replies in the full conversation or you can view them as their own thread so you can focus in on the specific topic. To make it even more clear who a message was meant for, we're introducing mentions. With mentions, you can just type someone's name to direct a message to them. And now you have the ability to only be notified when you're mentioned in the group conversation. And check out the top of this conversation. We have an all new design for how groups appear. And that's what's coming to messages in iOS 14. All new pinned conversations, fun updates to Memoji, and powerful improvements to groups. Today, we're going to tell you about some really big changes, how we're going to take the Mac to a whole new level. From the very beginning, the Mac redefined the entire computer industry. The Mac has always been about innovation and boldly pushing things forward, embracing big changes to stay at the forefront of personal computing. The Mac has had three major transitions in its history. The move to PowerPC, the transition to Mac OS X, 
and the move to Intel. And now it's time for a huge leap forward for the Mac. Because today is the day we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. When we make bold changes, it's for one simple yet powerful reason. So we can make much better products. When we look ahead, we envision some amazing new products and transitioning to our own custom silicon is what will enable us to bring them to life. Our vision for the Mac has always been about embracing breakthrough innovation and having the courage to make bold changes. Every time we've done this, the Mac has come out stronger and more capable. And I have never been more confident about the future of the Mac than I am today. So what's the timeline for this transition? Well, for developers, it begins this week with the valuable information delivered at this conference, as well as applying for the Quick Start program. And for the customers, we expect to ship our first Mac with Apple Silicon by the end of this year, and we expect the transition to take about two years. We plan to continue to support and release new versions of macOS for Intel-based Macs for years to come. In fact, we have some new Intel-based Macs in the pipeline that we're really excited about. What a huge leap forward for the Mac and for Apple. Apple Silicon will bring amazing technologies, industry-leading performance, and a common architecture across all of our products. Welcome back. Now, let's talk about some big changes coming to Mac OS. So this year, we're leaving our process shrouded in mystery and taking you straight to the glorious destination. Our next release of Mac OS is Mac OS Big Sur. Mac OS Big Sur introduces an entirely new design and major updates to some of the most essential apps on the platform. And just like its name, Big Sur brings you unmatched levels of power and beauty. Let's start with Design, where we're making the biggest change since the introduction of Mac OS X. Let's start with the dock. It has an elegant new design that floats along the bottom of your desktop. And you'll notice that we've created gorgeous new app icons for all of your favorite apps. Speaking of apps, let's take a look at the Finder. You'll notice it has a gorgeous new top-to-bottom design for the sidebar, and it has a compact, space-efficient toolbar. Makes it really easy to get to all of your controls. You may have noticed we've also updated the menu bar. It's now translucent and elegantly takes on the color of your desktop picture. And we've updated the layout of menus as well. We've given all the items just a little bit more room to breathe. Now on the Mac, we love our ability to get directly at controls like Wi-Fi or sound. And you can see that we've reworked these to be even more useful. But we've gone even further this year by giving you one place to get at all your controls we've brought Control Center to the Mac. All of my controls are here, and it's really easy to make adjustments. For instance, I could change display brightness here, or I can click to dive in for more, like turning on dark mode or activating night shift. And what's really cool is that I can customize the menu bar with any of these controls. So say I want one-click access to Do Not Disturb. Well, I can just click and drag it right into my menu bar and customize just like that iPad OS 14. Now today when you receive a call on iPad, you see this. Whatever you were working on is suddenly completely covered with the incoming call screen. Not cool. Wouldn't it be nicer if instead you saw this? Well, that's much better. Now an incoming call is presented with a compact notification that doesn't take you out of context. And you can simply tap to answer or flick it away to dismiss. And this applies to all calls, including those from your iPhone or third-party VoIP apps like Skype. And of course, we're bringing this to iOS as well. We think our iPhone customers are going to love it. Next, we want to push forward your ability to express yourself creatively with improvements to Apple Pencil. Well, this year, we're going to make handwriting just as easy and just as powerful. So this year, we're bringing Scribble to iPad. So you can handwrite into any text field and it will automatically be converted to text. Let's say you want to search for Edison bulbs in Safari. Using Scribble, I can just write directly into the text field and it automatically gets converted to type text. It also works in any text field. So I can easily add a new reminder to my shared reminders list with my husband. 
I've also been learning Chinese, so I want to surprise them with some of my progress and skills. I'll use Scratch to delete lights, and then I can use Scribble to write new, and then light fixture in Chinese. You'll notice how Scribble recognizes both English and Chinese in the same line. And what's awesome is that we can build on this technology to deliver other great features like data detectors. We can automatically detect what you write, like phone numbers so I can make a phone call, or addresses so I can look up directions. We can use these features together to do even more with your handwriting. Let's say I wanted to use my handwriting in another app. I can easily select what I want, tap the new copy as text from the callout bar, and then paste it into an app like Pages, and it's automatically converted to typed text. We're really excited about these awesome new features, and we think it will let you do even more with the Apple Pencil. Next, let's talk about AirPods. We have some amazing updates coming to AirPods, starting with automatic switching. AirPods will now seamlessly move between your devices without you having to manually switch them. Let's say you just finished listening to a podcast and you pick up your iPad to watch a show. AirPods will magically switch over. And later, you start a video conference on your Mac. AirPods will automatically switch again. And if a phone call comes in, the audio in your AirPods will route right back to your phone. We also have an exciting new feature coming to AirPods Pro, spatial audio. So our team created advanced spatial audio algorithms for AirPods Pro that replicate the movie theater experience. By applying directional audio filters and subtly adjusting the frequencies each ear receives, we can place sounds virtually anywhere in space, creating an immersive surround sound experience. But to truly deliver on this promise, we had to factor in real life situations. We constantly compare the motion data from your head and your screen to understand how they're moving in relation to each other. So if your bus turns the corner or your plane banks, the sound stays in sync. The result is a surround sound experience that keeps you in the middle of the action, no matter where you go. Spatial audio for AirPods Pro will work with content encoded in 5.1, 7.1, and even Dolby Atmos. Next, let's head to the fitness center to hear the latest on watchOS from Kevin. Until today, an app could appear in only one spot at a time on a watch face. In watchOS 7, developers can enable multiple complications, making even more richly personal watch faces. So if you like to use Dawn Patrol for surfing, you can create your own surf watch, including water temperature, swell, and wind speed predictions for your favorite beach. Or new parents can use Glow Baby to see nap, changing, and feeding times all in one face. While Nike Run Club can display stats like pace from your last run and your weekly run goals. With watchOS 7, we're making it super easy to share watch faces, so you can discover a face that works perfectly for you. To do this, we're introducing face sharing. It's a great way for the community of Apple Watch wearers to connect and help each other discover all the amazing things Apple Watch is capable of. Tracking your sleep. To tell you about this, over to Vera Carr. We are taking a more holistic approach to sleep by leveraging the devices you use every day to not only track your sleep, but to support you in actually meeting your sleep duration goal. That starts with choosing not only when you would like to wake up in the morning, but also when you'd like to go to bed. The screen will be off during time in bed, so it won't bother you, and a tap displays this simple face. When it's time to wake up, you have a selection of gentle and effective alarm sounds or a silent taptic only wake up alarm so you don't disturb your partner. What an incredible day of announcements. As you've seen, we haven't stopped innovating. We pushed all of our platforms forward in some amazing new ways. Our OS releases will be available as developer betas today, and each of them will have a public beta, including watchOS for the very first time starting next month. And all of this great software will be available to our customers this fall. 